everybody. We just brought the moon over the mountain. Hello, Ma. Hello, Pa. It wasn't much of a fight. I stood like that, but not for long. I... Quiet. This broadcast is coming to you through the courtesy of... 99.1 FM CJAM, Redefining Radio, in Windsor and Detroit. Are you listening? Now don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We'll soon be with you. <laughs> it's time for you talking to me with your host, Big JD. My two guests today are energy healers, Jane Berthume and Jill Canwisher. Jane is a registered clinical hypnosis practitioner, a Reiki master, advanced psych K practitioner, and has trained in healing touch and healing touch for animals. Jill is a healing touch certified practitioner, Reiki master, and advanced psych K practitioner. From Twin Connection Energy Healing, please welcome Jane and Jill to the show. How are you? We're good. Great. So tell us a little bit about energy healing in general. Uh, what is the basis to its approach? Um, well, basically, energy healing is based on Eastern medicine and the chakra system. Uh, so the basic idea of the chakra system is that there's seven main energy points along the center of the body. So if we think of that like a garden hose, and if these energy points are closed, or think of it like a kink in the hose, then the flow of energy is restricted and the body gets into a, a state of trauma. So the when these points are open, it boosts the immune, immune system and keeps the body in the optimal state to heal itself. What are these areas of the chakra? So there's the crown starting from the top, the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, the uh, solar plexus, the sacral, and the root. And it's different approaches used for these different areas, usually when you're working with a client? Yeah, so there's lots of different modalities that we use and other energy healers use to basically do the same thing, and that's to open the chakras. Okay. Uh, how do physicians react to what you do? Are, are, are they more accepting of alternative healing these days? Uh, are there some who may even suggest this alongside their own treatments? I think uh, with physicians, you, you kind of get a mixed bag there. Um, some, I, I would say GPs are too busy. You know, they're more um, reactive rather than proactive. Not that they aren't proactive, but they just don't have the time, especially in a clinic setting where you've got a room full of people. You know, it's not really... Uh, I wouldn't say that they're um, fully on board with it. But I think when you get into like oncologists and, and types of doctors like that where they're treating more the whole person, you know, where they're, they're not so um, worried about the immediate, uh, you know, if they've got a gash in their forehead, you know, that they're going to stitch it up and move them along, give them some, you know, painkillers. This When they're treating a person, they're looking at, the mind, the body, the spirit. So they're a little more prone to, to um, go with our services and to incorporate that into their, uh, you know, method of treatment for the patient. Are, are there cases which energy healing just may not help and you have no choice but to direct them to the doctor? Yeah, there's, I, I think it's a, you know, a, a kind of a surround the dragon approach, you know, to anything. Um, you might get, you know, like, let's use the gash on the head scenario again. It's great to go to the doctor for the stitches, but there's also things that you can do al alternatively to help with that healing process. So instead of just getting the stitches, maybe use some essential oils to help heal the wound or um, some energy work like um, things, a technique that we use called ultrasound to um, heal it energetically. So you can get much faster healing, much more complete healing by, you know, incorporating the Eastern and Western philosophies. 
Right. Now, aside from clients that would seek you out, uh, how do people react? We talked a little bit about physicians, but how do they react when suggested to try something alternative to what they're normally accustomed to? Are people generally more open today as well for alternative, holistic, homeopathic approaches? Yeah, I think people are really getting into it more. They're seeing the advantages of it. In fact, Jane and I were um, volunteering at um, the uh, Relay for Life uh, last weekend in in um, Kingsville. Mm-hmm. It was at the Harrow Arena, and we offered um, free um, sessions, mini sessions, for about 15 minutes, and we were shocked. We also had a massage therapist with us, and we thought for sure everybody would go for a massage and they'd be a little intimidated by, uh, you know, this new, con- con- well, it's not new, but new to them. And uh, not at all. There was, people were just lining up like crazy to uh, come and see what we had to offer and to try it. So we were really uh, hopeful and, you know, it was exciting to introduce it to people who have never tried it. And so it was, it was a great experience. So I think they are m- much more open. Now, I want to talk uh, about some of the techniques that you guys use. Uh, you, you mentioned a couple sort of already. First, Jane, you're registered in uh, clinical hypnosis. Uh, I think most people think they know what that means, but uh, they may be more familiar with the theatrical type, you know, for entertainment purposes. But uh, tell us what clinical hypnosis is and, and uh, what it might be used to, the types of things it might be used to treat. Okay, so hypnosis uh, works with the subconscious. And and like you said, most people are familiar with stage hypnosis, which involves a rapid induction, and they use people from the audience who are the ones that are jumping up and down, and they're really excited, and they they want to be pulled from the audience, and those people are, are what we call a physical type of person. And then there's the other people in the audience who are like, uh-uh, no way, you are not getting me up on that stage. Those are the emotional type of people. So in a, the clinical hypnosis, um, the we deal with both those types. So the physicals can go into hypnosis very easily, but the emotional people we take very slowly. And what hypnosis is, is basically guided meditation, but with an intention to change something in the subconscious mind. Stage hypnosis, is, is that actually real? I mean, can people be hypnotized that easily? Yeah, yeah, physical people. It was actually a course we had to take to get certified. And I was horrified because, uh, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't ever like going, you know, in public and having, and we had to do this stage hypnosis. But, um, yeah, people actually do, are very susceptible. But, like I said, those are the physical types. But then the emotional type, which I am, you need to sit and just, calm them down and getting get them to a deep state of relaxation right and and now is that just the type of hypnosis or the type of person that is being hypnotized it's the type of person so you just you speak to people differently to get them right. into that relaxed state so you have to know the personalities of your clients and then uh, some of the common things that you might treat with hypnosis Well, I use hypnosis in my practice. I don't do a ton of. I use it more as a supplemental modality where I've created CDs for people with typical issues like um, not being able to sleep. That's my biggest seller. Sure. Um, So things like stopping smoking, um, anxiety, pain relief. So those types of things. You're both Reiki masters. Uh, tell us about Reiki and uh, are there levels to this, thus the master title? Yeah, actually the there's levels one, two, three, and master. So the way Reiki works and the reason why I like it is it's almost like a martial art, the way things are passed down through a martial art. So you have a master, a sensei, a teacher, whatever you want to call them, and they pass the techniques on to their students, and then through time and experience, uh, they then become the teacher and pass it on. What is that exactly, that technique? The, the, te- the Reiki, Reiki is based off one basic technique. 
So, um, whereas other modalities like uh, healing touch will have 20, 30 techniques or more. Okay. Um, Reiki is based on one, one simple way, which is great because I use it to teach uh, teens. I use it to teach kids, to mm-hmm. teach people in their 80s. So anyone can use it. And is that a touch type of healing? You can either use light touch or work in their energy field just off the body. Okay. And Jane, you're also both advanced Psych K practitioners. Now, this process has been around since, I guess, the late 80s, and uh, I've seen some similar techniques, but what's uh, special about Psych K as, uh, I know you speak highly of this, especially in conjunction with other forms of healing. In fact, you group this as something uh, you guys call body-mind healing therapy? Yeah, uh, we group it together because, to me, a modality that only works on the body is a bit incomplete. So we combine that with Psyche, which works on your belief system. Uh, and actually, I'll have Jill give you just a little bit of background on the, on the Psyche. Sure. Uh, Psyche was created by uh, Robert Williams, who was a psychotherapist, who was really frustrated by the lack of results that he was getting in his practice. And so the, the thought is that you're, uh, when you believe something in both your conscious and your subconscious mind, then you can manifest it in your life. But if, you, if, if there's a conflict there and, and your subconscious mind isn't believing what your conscious mind is, then, then you can't do it no matter how you try. And I'm sure you've had situations in your life where you think, gosh, I'm, I'm really sabotaging myself. I, I, I believe that, you know, let's say I believe that I can give a terrific interview. I absolutely believe it. But then, you know, let's say um, you get the opportunity to interview Oprah Winfrey. Mm-hmm. And you think, oh, my gosh, I'm not worthy. I'm, you know, she's, she's too good. Maybe I don't have the skills. Maybe I won't know what to say. Those are sabotaging beliefs. And so before you go ahead and do that interview with Oprah, you're going to want to balance those two levels of consciousness. So you're going in there with the ab- absolutely knowing that you're going to do a great interview. You're going to know exactly what to say, what questions to ask, you know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. That's what Psyche does. So your company, Twin Connection Energy Healing, is named after the bond you share as sisters. Are you guys actually related? We are identical twins. Okay. So tell us about the company, Twin Connection Energy Healing, and how you started the company, maybe how it came about for you. Well, I I moved to Calgary about uh, five years ago, and uh, I started the company there, and then I called Jill up and I said, hey, wouldn't it be fun, you know, you start one in Windsor. So Jill still works full time, but she she opened the company here, and now that I'm back, uh, I'm part of that company uh, in Windsor. In Windsor and Leamington, do you have locations, or? Well, we have um, we do our healing out of uh, this great old house in South Windsor, um, and I. But a lot of a lot of our healing, we go out to people, so we'll be in the hospitals, or if someone's too weak or sick to travel, we'll go to them. Um, and also with the, Jane does, um, healing touch for animals. So, uh, if it's an animal, she may go to them as well. Yeah. They're more comfortable in their own setting. Mm-hmm. And you, you have a website as well, uh, and, and on Facebook and, and Twitter, I believe can maybe you can give out your web address. Yeah. The web address is www.energyhealingforallages.com. And, uh, yeah, if you go to the website, there's all kinds of, you can, you can uh, book your uh, session online, you can pay for it online, there's uh, MP3s that you can download for uh, hypnosis and meditation. Uh, I wrote a book while I was living in Calgary, uh, it's available as an ebook on there. Definitely want to talk about some of the, the technology used on the website as well. It's great that you're using that type of technology for your uh, for your clients um, to the fullest, I guess, with videos, MP3s, and all that available for purchase on the website. What kinds of information do you make available in your audio downloads? There's uh, radio interviews such as this one will mm-hmm. be available uh, once this airs, but uh, right. there's other radio interviews, and I've done some videos on what is Psyche and... Uh, talking about distance healing. So we're really trying to educate people on uh, energy healing and what it's all about. 
Great. And Jane... Uh